All right, guys, I'm in Studio 45 for Joshua P's Tampa class. It's actually day two. I got a haircut yesterday, you guys can see. Did not get any footage. My man, JT, recorded it all up and down. But I'm gonna show you guys what's going on today, a couple haircuts, and then we'll see what we get for the rest of the week. foundation within that first cut within the transition zone there's two areas there is our transition which is the parietal ridge that's our blend remember translate that into blend that is just where we put our blend right you wouldn't put your blend higher than that and this is what we figure out a lot of time if i use the word foundation what does it make you think psychologically it makes you think bottom up foundation is normally the lowest part and you work up from that so when i use the word foundation what people ended up doing was thinking only of the top so a lot of people would end up creating their horizontal guide around this area because they're thinking of the top, but they end up creating their actual horizontal cut above the parietal ridge. We want to make sure that that first cut is on the parietal ridge, so that's why I put the word transition in first before we hit foundation. You're going to make sure you pull down to your transition, to your actual blend, and create that first cut at your blend. Now we break it down in a little bit more detail. So again, this is, this is complex stuff, right? But it's still a simple process. And this is the way for me to think about it. I want to be able to break down a simple process, a simple structure, as complex as I can. That's maximum control. But what I want to kind of get your head around is looking and thinking deeper into things. So when we think about our foundation, we cut that horizontal cut at our transition point. Now think about it like you're putting your clippers in. I would have said to a lot of people over the time, when you put your clippers in, you've got to go up and through your foundation in a straight line off of your transition. So wherever your transition is, if it's here, if it's here, or if it's here, your clippers need to go in a straight line from that. How many times have you got to a haircut, you try, try to create like a nice square image, but you, you've got that little, little bit of a, you can't see it, see it, but you just know it doesn't look square. It's because when you're doing your clipper work, you're most likely just flicking out a bit at the top. If that's my guide that I've cut, and I flick that out, what am I doing? I'm complementing that curve. I'm just literally rebuilding that curve in. The reason why I've still left this on, because I used to use this ages ago, right? This, this, this diagram. And the reason why I've left this on, because this depicts everything I believe about the industry. On the surface, it looks complicated, but once you know exactly what you're paying attention to, it's easy. Because all this is, is your three haircuts. Triangular, square, round. Three haircuts, it's four haircut in this. So you can see that the hair will fit a lot better to the head shape once it's wet. Because of that, I'll be looking to see exactly what the head shape is. So what I want to talk about in this one, just before we begin, is like a lot of times people come in with hair like this, especially on a brush back. And sometimes it's not like, like Peter's hair is quite easy, right? You can just like probably forward a bit. I can pretty much see where it splits because it naturally parts. I can just do that. And I'm pretty much, I can then see that I'm almost at the crown at the back, right? So it's pretty easy, but not everyone's like that. Like you get a lot of hair like this when they come in with a brush back and you're trying to find their growth patterns and you can't really find them. So I'll always start and look for sort of where it splits in the middle and then just push back. Because remember, you're working along the peak of the hair. I can then go from there to start sectioning out my horseshoe. Now I can see where it actually splits. And I can be like, okay, cool. So from here now, I can start to comb forward. And I can section through. And I'll section bit by bit a lot of the time. The comb gets caught up in the hair, right? And I don't want to force myself to push all the way through. I just want to section a little bit by little bit. Now I've sectioned something out that's actually going to look relatively clean. I can see my sections. So I'm going to pull down to my parietal ridge, pull out and set a distance away from the head at the parietal ridge, allowing that to be the, the, the foundation for this to sit on, and then that the guide for the sides to be cut from. And connect my line. So it's going to be longer here in the back. We'll create a straight line. My foundation will be a little bit different than my foundation yesterday. I took a round foundation yesterday, which is natural with the head shape. In this case, I want to keep the back a lot longer than the sides. My foundation in the back is going to be basically a straight line, rather than be following the roundness of the head, because I want to keep these corners a lot longer. So I'm going to have a straight line in the back, and then I'm going to connect my way from the front to the back, and keep while maintaining these corners here in the back. So instead of me moving with every section that I grab, I'm just going to stay in one position and pull all the hair basically towards me. So essentially, you'll be, I'll be over directing the hair a tad bit back. So whenever I do uh, style it, all of the, these corners are way longer than the rest of the hair. So it's important to notice as well when I'm doing this, it will look and appear as if the foundation dips at the back. Obviously, it's supposed to because of the prior to ridge. But what it will look like when you're actually cutting it is it's going to almost appear like you're taking it shorter at the front. 
You're not, because all you're doing is at the parietal ridge, you're setting it the same distance away from the head. All it means is that at the parietal ridge, this has less distance to travel than this does to get there. So remember, it's not this length you're looking at, it's not that length, it's this distance away that we're looking at. You have to make sure that you start your first section here, rather than here. You start your first section here, it's zero point because you've got no guide here. Your guide starts here, so, and I'm sitting through where I know it's a guide. Hold that out, from my guide at the top. And cut down. The only time I'll ever use the guys I'll pull this down to cut what's in front of you. So this is going to be taken down after this anyway. And now, I'm going to put it straight down in the sections. Lo que yo voy a hacer es agarrando secciones verticales. Cuando llegue a este punto de aquí abajo, lo que voy a hacer es ir para atrás. Saco para atrás y uso el lente de aquí abajo como referencia. Pero as far as the hair up here, I want to set a nice smooth. So what I'm going to do is just start basically pivoting. Yo voy a básicamente voy a hacer exactamente lo que hice en este recorte. Yo no puedo hacer eso. 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 Yo no puedo <laughs> no discount on that. <laughs> right? If I knew I wanted to take this off straight away, what I would have done, right, is I would have come in, right, and I would have taken the first two sections diagonally, and then every other section I would have been diagonally horizontal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift up, and I'm going to cut the back, right, my chest, and more of a soft square. So not much is going to come off. And I'm going to work diagonally. Mm. Into horizontal at the back to take the excess weight out from behind the crown. Because when I do this both sides, I will essentially cross graduate the crown behind it. Sorry. So now I'm at the ears and I'm going to start to pull further down to make it heavier and change my angle to that. So I'm working further away from the head the further forward I go. So if you think about it, this line goes straight. If this line does that, it means the two lines are disconnected, so the top is longer. So every time I'm putting it straight out from. So that new section. Well, as you can go left and go right. Yeah. I always do, but I mean, personal, that's a personal preference, really. Okay. Same white balance, same movement, same process, moving from exterior to interior. But if they want it to be short, so they want the top to be a lot lower, I'll use zone one or two of my guys rather than zone three or four. Por ejemplo, si un saco de chamaquito de hoy en día le gusta la canción de la de la de la de la la See, a lot of barbers do this when they go to the taper, but they end up chasing it too high and it, because they're used to fading, right? And then when you start, they start adding more like a fade. It's great if your hair's the same length as Sean's on top, but if it's going to be a lot longer like this, all from the parietal, it needs to be only stopping underneath it rather than going into it. So obviously I don't want to add this too, I'm going to make it too short. What I'm going to do, you can pick the paper as well. I'm going to save this down, but I'm only going to keep it quite short through here, right? Just for the beard area. I don't want to take my zero any higher than that. Can you take me away right now? Yes. <laughs> On the time. I pulled out the three, but the hair is that. Yeah. More than what the first point that you can to see. But I'll do it up until I've got, I know the fade is bended in. The top of the blend now is a little bit choppy, right? Yeah. So what I'll do is, it's like, like, I'll just go from the top down again. That's what I'll always do. Make sure I do one bit of it, and then just go from the top down. But this time, it'll be with the hair going in the direction of the, of the, the style. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get it as good as you can every single time, but 
when you're working through, sometimes you've got to be like, like take the lesson and learn from it, rather than chasing and chasing and chasing. If you've got a 30 minute time slot, at the end of it, take a photo. And the, the ones that you want to take the photo of the least are the ones you need to take the photo of the most. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of haircut where you're thinking, fuck, get this gun. I can't wait to get out the chair. <laughs> Right? I promise you that's what set the photo of the most. Because I bet when you look back at it on the night, it won't be as bad as you thought. And the things that you did, you don't like, you can then learn from it. Be like, okay, I didn't like this because of this. I only still need to see the clay. I haven't got the clay yet. Don't worry, cut it. Oh, it's pretty not crazy, crazy amount, just a touch. <laughs> I'm only gonna gloss the exterior with the two. Like that, like, Yo, you know what? Oh, we might actually be able to do something. Over here. All right, guys, that is it for the video. It's the first half of our trip. If you guys liked it, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the second half of the trip. I'm going to get my hair colored and get a little bit more of a haircut. And you guys can check more out on that here in a little bit. So don't go anywhere. If you guys did like this, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up. Appreciate you guys checking it out. And I will catch you guys next time.